much for being here today at the biggest signal yet here in the Moscone Center. So exciting. So exciting to be here in the building that over the years has housed the greatest gatherings of technologists and developers and companies as we've gathered to build the future together. Apple, WWDC, Java One, RSA, GDC, Dreamforce, and now Signal here in the Moscone Center. And what that shows me is that communications, one of the most fundamental human endeavors, is now firmly in the hands of the amazing group of people we call software developers, and we cannot fit in any other venue in the Bay Area anymore, so thank you. Now, we are a company by developers for developers. Evan, John, and I started Twilio 11 years ago. Because as developers, we wanted to be able to use communications to create great apps, to create great companies, and create great customer experiences. But back then, communications was just inaccessible to software developers. And so we started with a simple idea. We said, why isn't that just an API? And this simple idea that communication should be in the tool belt of every software developer in the world. And if it was, that together we would create the future of how people and companies communicate. And that idea has been taken on by all of you, the developers of the world. And you know, in May, we announced a milestone that we had five million developers in the Twilio ecosystem. And today I'm excited to say that number is six million developers on the Twilio platform. So welcome and thank you to all the developers out there. You blow our minds all the time with your amazing ideas, building incredible things like Chloe Condon, who created a IoT button that when she presses it, calls her phone to get her out of an awkward conversation. She calls it fake boyfriend. <laughs> or Clay Mo Sauvage, who said, what happens if you put a contact center entirely inside of Slack? And so he's building that. He calls it just a call. Those and thousands of more and millions of more developers building amazing things every day. You inspire us. Thank you. And welcome and thank you to the 160,000 companies who trust Twilio with their communications to engage your customers. Companies that are big and small in every industry, on every continent, realizing that the power of software it's how you're going to delight your customers and that you need to build your way into this digital future. Companies like digital giants, like Netflix or Nextdoor or so many others who are using email and text and voice to connect their customers together. And enterprises like, well, Enterprise Rent-A-Car who's reimagining the whole life cycle of reserving and then renting and using and returning a car across all their brands, Enterprise, National, Alamo, and 160,000 more companies. Thank you, and welcome to Signal. And it's, <laughs> and it's also the nonprofits of the world who partner with Twilio.org to help improve communities and the world around us by creating the communications that bring hope, power, and freedom to those most in need. Organizations like TurboVote by Democracy Works, who in 2016 registered one million new voters, and in 2018 registered six million new voters because of the power of a text message. <laughs> or Benefits Data Trust, that helps people get access to social services like food stamps, and they've secured over $7 billion in benefits for low-income Americans because they've made it easier to apply for those benefits using this technology. And even the government is in on the act, like the VA, who uses text messages to remind vets to show up for their appointments, and they've saved $110 million of taxpayer money and improved health care for veterans at the same time. So to all of those nonprofits who are improving our communities, thank you and welcome to Signal.
truly, together, we are building the future of all kinds of engagement. And see, at Twilio, we have this front row seat to all the innovation that's happening across all these industries, across all the continents. And so these two days of Signal are about sharing back with you what we're seeing and allowing you to share with each other via all these sessions how communications is changing our companies, changing our communities, and changing our lives in this digital era. And so today, we're going to talk about the future of customer engagement. We're going to talk about how the best companies are using communications to improve their customer relationships. We can't wait to share some of the things that we've been building based on your feedback. And mostly, we're going to talk about how developers are changing the equation at all kinds of companies and organizations to truly create the future of communications. And we know this because of the massive scale your applications are reaching with our APIs. In the last year, your apps have driven 750 billion human interactions. Calls, texts, emails. Let me break that down for you. Every single minute, that's more than 32,000 phone calls made using Twilio. Every second, up to 13,000 peak SMSs are sent. 13,000 text messages a second at peak. That number is double what it was a year ago. You know, the Warriors are moving to the new Chase Arena. We could text the whole arena in about a second and a half. Think about that. That's crazy. Your apps have reached 2.8 billion unique phone numbers on the planet. That's about half of the entire human population in the last year. And your apps reach 3 billion email addresses every quarter. Half of all email addresses your apps are touching every single quarter. And so while we're a company by developers for developers, we believe that it's our job to help bring more people into this story, more people into the story of software, more people into the story of innovation and of communications and of Twilio. See, if more, if software developers are going to invent the communications of the future, then we always ask, how can we increase the size of this amazing group of people called software developers? And so we're doing a lot of things to try to make that happen. You know, several years ago, we created our Hatch program which is the apprenticeship for people who are just entering the software development field, and in particular, who are coming from an underrepresented background. And so far, of our Hatch graduates, 91% of them got their first job and are employed at Twilio as full-time software engineers. Let's hear it for our Hatch apprentices. <laughs> but we're also improving developer education with something we call Twilio Quest, an interactive, literal video game that we built that makes learning to code fun and easy. It helps people learn to code, it helps people learn Twilio, and to date, you all have racked up 4.2 million experience points in just the last 12 months playing Twilio Quest and improving your developer skills. But we also take Twilio Quest on the road in something we call Superclass. And we've done dozens of these super classes around the world, in person, at sites, in cities everywhere. And it's amazing to see the response of developers on site. We held one just yesterday here, learning to code, learning Twilio, and having their eyes light up as they learn new things. We do it in cities around the world, in, in communities, but we also have taken super class now into the enterprise. And we work with companies like U-Haul, and a major airline in Dallas, and many others to bring Superclass into their walls and hold internal education and hackathons to help unlock the abilities of all the developers inside of those companies. But to us, it's also about building a company that if we at Twilio, we are going to help reimagine the future of communications that are gonna serve this world, well, we need a company that looks like the world that we're serving. And we need every talented person on this planet who can help us in our goal of changing communications to feel like they belong at Twilio. And so we've set out some goals for the company that we want to be in just a few years, in 2023. Our goal is that by 2023, Twilio is 50% women and 30% underrepresented people.
And to be clear, we are not there yet. We have a lot of work to do, but you know what we think? Being transparent, setting goals, rolling up our sleeves, that's how doers get anything done, and that's how we feel about building a company that more perfectly reflects the world around us, and we are excited to undertake this mission. And we have for many years been committed to measuring and fixing pay disparity at Twilio. And so we now publish on our website the fact that we have statistically equal pay by gender and race. And we are committed to continually publishing our progress towards our goals of creating a company that perfectly reflects the world around us. Now we talk about doers a lot. Doer is this word we use for people who aren't satisfied with how the world is. You're not satisfied with how things are, and so you pick up your tools and you get building. And there's a company that has truly internalized the spirit of doers, and that company is Netflix. In fact, they delight us every night, sometimes for way too many hours, <laughs> with, the, with the things that they bring into our living room, all these amazing shows. And so to hear how they use Twilio to create an amazing customer experience and help us all take down yet another season of Stranger Things, no spoilers, I'm only on episode one, please welcome the Director of Messaging and Contact Engineering, Davika Chawla. Davika! Davika, welcome Thanks. to Signal. So first of all, can you tell us how Netflix uses Twilio? Yes, so as you all know, uh, we are on this awesome journey to entertain the world. Uh, my role and the role of my teams is to communicate across the customer life cycle. And so uh, if you got the welcome email uh, after you signed up for Netflix, or got your reminder for Stranger Things season three that's coming from the systems we built, uh, or Thank if you, you called, uh, yes, uh, or if you called customer service uh, or chatted with uh, a support agent to get help or went to help center, those experiences are also being built by us. Uh, we started using Twilio for delivering SMS messages a few years ago, um, and more recently we're also using Twilio to augment our uh, toll-free number capabilities globally. And you have a presence all around the world. You are an incredibly global company. How many countries does Netflix operate in? Uh, we're in about 190 countries worldwide. Wow. Yes. And so what was your approach to architecting and building this communications that would have to span the entire planet? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, um, we think about flexibility as being very key to anything that we do. Um, and um, we decided that we want to be able to react when things change, when we need to change. Uh, and we architected the platform in a way to be able to have the messages be pretty flexible constructs where the channels could be orthogonal uh, and we could uh, do the message construction independent of the actual outbound delivery across channels. Uh, and so we thought that with that kind of approach, as we went global, uh, we would be able to cater to the needs of customers who would have different channel preferences. Uh, and so we were pretty easily able to sort of plug and play Twilio uh, for delivering SMS messages, just the way we were doing email message delivery through our email delivery provider, or push notifications through APNS and GCM, and other channels as they emerge worldwide. And so, um, I like that notion, because it's, like uh, it's like an MVC, like a model view controller almost. Right. You've got content and you've got delivery, so business logic and content are separated. Right. That's a really uh, flexible architecture. Right. So what? What's been the customer impact since you've been investing in this customer engagement? Yeah, so um, we're able to meet the needs of customers and, and create account workflows that really help them with what they're doing on Netflix. So uh, now, in addition to being able to recover passwords through email, customers can also do that through SMS, and so we're able to help more customers. Uh, we also introduced a pretty creative workflow to help members sign up on TV, because you, as you can imagine, with a remote control, it's really tough to finish your sign up. And so we now uh, also text a message to the mobile phone number uh, if they provide one to us, and then they're able to finish the sign up flow there. That's much easier and, and just removes a lot of friction. So just building better experiences, and bottom line, it's about flexibility. We have new channels, uh, we can learn a lot and really improve the customer experience. 
one feature request. Can you let me log out of the like Airbnb that I logged into last week and I forgot to log out of? I will chat with the product manager. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I have a question because Netflix is very famously a company that focuses on using cutting edge technology. And I want to know, how do you think about how that technology really helps to empower the developers at, at Netflix to move fast and focus on customers? I think it's about um, being able to, to change and, and learn and improve. Um, and as if we're comfortable with change and comfortable with learning and getting better, uh, I think that's really the fundamental premise for being able to move faster and get to the next level. And um, in fact, when we were looking at Twilio for SMS capabilities, uh, we thought the APIs were well written, we were able to really integrate them fast, get things up and running really quickly, and so we could develop fast and learn fast, and that's really how we think we can move forward, and that's what helps us all. Awesome. And just one last question, between, just between you and me. Okay, sure. And the 4,000 people Small there. Small secret here, yes. Is there going to be a Stranger Things season four? Uh, I can't wait to find out. It's not your, uh, it's not your call. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Davika. Thank you very much, Davika. Let's hear it. Fantastic. Oh, man. Seriously, nobody spoils Stranger Things season three for me. We're on, season, we're on episode one. Don't ruin it. So. We are listening at Twilio, we're listening to customers all the time. And as great software engineering like Netflix do, we focus on agility. And one of the ways that we measure our progress and our goal to being an agile company and that pace of innovation is our ability to release code to production. And many cloud companies will release production code two, three, maybe four times a year. And at Twilio, we are on pace this year to release to production 125,000 times. And that is how you achieve agility. But you don't care about releases. You care what's in those releases. And we're really proud of the things we've delivered in the last year. For example, taking things from beta to GA very quickly, like Twilio Pay and Twilio uh, Recording Encryption. It's, things that, uh, it's, it's items that let you do more with Twilio, like integrating Google Assistant into Autopilot, or Twilio for Salesforce that lets Salesforce developers easily embed Twilio. And sometimes it's making your life easier as you're scaling your applications. Things like our new redesigned Twilio status page, which gives you granular detail all around the globe for all our products, or our redesigned Twilio invoices that make it easier for you to understand our billing. And sometimes it's helping you be compliant. Things like PSD2 for Authy that help our European customers stay compliant with the new laws around privacy or our global compliance workflows for phone numbers. These and hundreds of more things that we are delivering every day. But we also hear a lot from customers in the healthcare space. And we see so many ideas in healthcare. Areas where better communications can improve healthcare outcomes because you have better collaboration between doctors and patients and providers and even caregivers. But keeping protected health information, PHI, keeping it private and keeping it secure is a big responsibility, and we take that responsibility very seriously. And that's why we've been extremely diligent in the process of addressing HIPAA and signing business associate agreements, or BAAs. But now I can say that starting in 2020, we will begin signing BAAs and taking on healthcare workloads. And we'll be sharing our product by product roadmap with our healthcare customers in the coming months. But we are very excited to finally be taking on these workloads and making this announcement today because there are so many ways and there's so many great innovators out there making healthcare better all the time. Now, another area that we focus a lot of energy is on developer experience. Because we're built for developers, we always focus on how our developer experience can make you more productive and give you a great experience that feels natural and fits in with the workflows you already have. And while Evan, John, and I started Twilio back in, in 2008, and at the time we focused on a great REST API and a great console and docs, we hear you. That's not enough. 
there's so much more that we can be doing to continue evolving our developer experience. And so we've been working with you, many of our customers, to understand how that workflow would best fit into your lives. And it's time that we share with you what we've been working on. So to do that, please welcome up the head of developer experience here at Twilio, Ben Stein. Ben, come on up. Morning signal. In my role at Twilio, I get to focus on developer experience. What it's like to build with Twilio across all of our products. It's our job to make you, developers, more efficient, more productive, to write better code, more secure code, and to absolutely love doing it. So we sit down. We sit down with, with developers and uh, we chat, right? Developers of all different skill levels, developers using all different products, different programming languages, different text editors. We even sit down with wacky developers who prefer spaces over tabs. And here's what we've learned. Everyone starts building with Twilio pretty much the exact same way, with their trusty IDE and their phone. And the first thing everyone does is they uh, search for uh, docs, for code samples to get started. And we have getting started guides in the most common uh, uh, use cases across all different programming languages. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start up your web server, right, to serve up your content and probably a tunnel or a proxy server to get that code exposed to the internet. And then you're going to log into Twilio console. Oh, actually, you're going to write your tests, right? We're good developers. We always write tests, and we run our tests. You log into console to now uh, look at your call logs and uh, view your phone numbers. And uh, that means, of course, browser tabs. And you log in again to write code in functions. And you drag and drop inside Studio. And that's more browser tabs. And you're debugging. And pretty much after a few minutes, everyone's desktop looks like this, right? <laughs> yeah, I see the nods, right? It's, uh, why is this, right? That's what we wanted to know. It's because software is complex, right? This is not unique to Twilio. There's a lot that developers have to do that's not writing code. There's a lot of operational work that's part of the day-to-day -day job. And while no single thing is, is that hard, together it adds up to complexity. And when we sit down, we hear the same thing from you. Twilio, make it simpler. We want less complexity. We want less context switching. We want you to stop making us take our hands off the keyboard. We hate taking our hands off the keyboard, which is why I am so excited to announce today the new Twilio command line interface, or CLI. <laughs> it's an open source tool that will uh, unleash the full power of Twilio right from the environment we're most comfortable in, the command line. All of Twilio's products and APIs are supported out of the box. So it's easier than ever to send text messages, view call logs, WhatsApp, and everything else. But let me be clear, this is not just a wrapper around our API. It's an entirely new way to create and manage Twilio applications. We've taken the most common tasks that we see developers do over and over again, and we've, uh, we've uh, bundled them up. So it's easy to buy phone numbers, it's easy to view your debug logs, and of course, to send emails. The uh, CLI is completely extensible with plugins, so you can write your own and add functionality. You can open source it, or uh, you can make them private for your internal uh, workflows. But look, this is, this is Twilio. Uh, we don't like to just talk about code, we like to show it. We like to live code on stage. But this is Signal, right? This is Moscone Center. So we gotta, we gotta raise the stakes. I wanna show you just how awesome this new developer experience is. Which means, for the first time ever at Signal, we are going to do a live, head-to-head -head coding competition. Are you ready? And in the left corner, with a MacBook Pro weighing in at 2.3 pounds, Director of Solution Engineering, Darlene Volas! And in the right corner, hailing 
coming from Detroit, Michigan. You can't spell code without CEO Jeff Lawson. All right, the rules are simple. We are going to give our contestants three challenges. Ch <laughs> Are you wearing coding gloves? <laughs> coding gloves. <laughs> the, rule, the rules are simple. We are going to give our contestants three challenges. Challenge number one, write code to serve up Twimmel on their laptops. Challenge number two, we are going to connect a Twilio phone number and test out a phone call. And challenge number three, we're going to do it live with all of you. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, contestants, here. Here's the, here's, the, here's the twist. Darlene, you get to use the new Twilio developer experience, including the command line interface. Jeff, you don't. <laughs> <coughs> On your marks, get set, code! All right, let's check in over here with Jeff. He is Googling for code the way any good developer does. And uh, this is a great way to get started. We have getting started guides and all the common use cases. And let's look at Darlene. She is using the new Twilio CLI. And she can just pick a template right from the CLI to get started. And that is going to generate the code for her. Absolutely no need to uh, Google to copy and paste code. Next, she's going to run a web server on her laptop. Uh, and she's going to do that with a serverless start command, and that's running the server. And let's look at her twimmel, and she's done. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that that was really fast. All right, Jeff, Jeff, finish your app. Let me explain what just happened. <laughs> All right, we 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 see Darlene uh, created a new uh, a Twilio app. We've taken those getting started guides that I talked about for the common use cases. We've baked them right into the CLI. So you can pick from a menu. No need to Google, to copy and paste. Because we want to make it simpler, reduce complexity, reduce the number of things you have to do to build with Twilio. That's why we also integrated a web server right into the CLI. No need to go off and find and install more tools just to get started with Twilio. All right, contestants, are you ready for challenge number two? We are going to wire up a Twilio phone number to their code running on their laptop, and then our contestants can test out their apps. Here is the tricky part about this. Their laptops are not exposed on the public internet. They're going to need to set up some sort of tunnel or proxy server in order to expose their laptops. Let's see how they do. On your marks, get set, node! Jeff is logged into the Twilio web console where he is going to configure his phone number and set the URL on the phone number. Let's check in with Darlene. She's listing all of the phone numbers inside her project right from the uh, command line. You can see them right there. And she's going to update her Twilio phone number. Uh, that's the 415 number uh, with the URL of her laptop. Uh, let's see if that works. All right. And while you're, that is running, Darlene, why don't you test that out with, with your phone, see if it works. And let's check in with Jeff. All right, Jeff is downloading a third-party utility to tunnel his laptop and expose it to the web. This is all taken care of by the command line interface. There's no reason to have to go off and do extra steps, download third-party applications just to build with Twilio. <laughs> all right, Darlene, how are you doing? <laughs> all right, OK. so. Jeff, you didn't get to test your app, but it's OK. I'm sure it works. I'm sure there's no, no one with coding gloves would introduce a bug. <laughs> all right, challenge number three, we are going to do this live with all of you. This is obviously the scariest part for our contestants. Their laptops will not be able to handle the load of 5,000 simultaneous phone calls. So they're going to need to deploy their code into the cloud to handle the scale of all of you. Ready, contestants? On your marks, get set, load. All right, Darlene, she is going to uh, run the Twilio deploy command. Let's see over there. And Jeff, what are you? Jeff is looking for, <laughs> for a hosting provider. All right, Darlene. <laughs> 
Darlene running serverless deploy. This is a single command that will deploy code. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> it will deploy code directly to Twilio's cloud. Uh, this is our new serverless API that will uh, automatically package up code, deploy it into Twilio's serverless environment, scales elastically, automatically. This API is available today. Darlene is updating her phone number with the production URL that we just got back from Twilio. This is running in our domain. <laughs> and we are done. Ding. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for playing. We are going to send you home with a consolation prize, a brand new set of steak knives. All right. Darlene, before we can award you your trophy, we need to actually do this live with this audience. So folks, please get out your phones. Let's try this out. Let's see if Darlene's code can handle the load. And while you're doing that, one more thing we want to show you. Twilio, watch. This will stream all of your incoming calls, text messages, debug errors, everything that's happening inside your Twilio account, stream directly to the terminal. Right? Awesome. You can see all of your calls coming in. Some people are sending text messages for some reason. That's awesome. You can see it all happening live right from the terminal. All right, let's give a big hand for Darlene, for Jeff, and the new Twilio developer experience. That is the new Twilio command line interface. It is available today on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's part of the Twilio runtime, our suite of developer-focused tools and products to make it easier than ever to build with Twilio. We cannot wait to see what you build. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, Darlene. That's it. I'm a gracious loser. Seriously, though, that Twilio CLI, we've seen it already be a game changer for the developers who beta tested that with us, game changing for the workflow of, of using Twilio and writing code and testing it and deploying it. We can't wait to see, uh, and we can't wait to get your feedback, actually, on that and where we can take it from here. We hope you enjoy it. Now, as a company, by doers for doers, we love getting inspired by all the doers around us. And today, I wanted to introduce you to one doer who's really inspired me in my life. And that person is my Papa Vic, my dad's father, Vic Lawson. Vic was an independent sales rep for paint supplies, like paintbrushes and rollers and stirrers and little hats. For decades in the metro Detroit area. He went around to all the independent hardware stores in the Detroit area and sold them the paint supplies that they needed. Stores with names like Northside Hardware, Detroit Hardware, Fishman Hardware, Dexter Hardware, Third Avenue Hardware, you get the idea. And he worked with these small businesses, often across multiple generations of the owners to keep their shelves stocked with all the paint supplies that their customers needed. He did this for decades. In fact, he worked until the year he died at age 97. And he would make a point of always showing up at his customers, always showing up and interacting with them at every single opportunity that he could. And in fact, in his later years, he couldn't drive himself. And so his children and his grandchildren, we would take turns driving him on his route to all the independent hardware stores of the metro Detroit area. And I got a chance to go on a few of these runs with him. And I have to tell you, it was absolutely magical to see my 97-year-old grandfather at work. He'd walk in the door of these stores and they'd say, Vic! He'd say, hey, how's it going? How's business? He'd say, eh, the big box went in down the street. What you gonna do? And they'd say things like, you know, hey, uh, you know, uh, and Vic would say, do you need more paint supplies? Do you need more brushes and rollers? And they'd say, look, just go in the back, look at the shelf, tell me what I need, I'll order anything you say, I trust you. They literally would just say, go back, tell me what I need, I'll buy it. It was absolutely amazing. He was a legend in the Detroit hardware community. Literally, they called him that. Lawson the legend. There were young sales reps in Detroit 
who assumed they would take over his territory when he retired. And they retired before he did. <laughs> True story. And when he did pass away just a few years ago, almost all of those customers came to his funeral. Now, he didn't need to work all those years. He could have retired at any time that he wanted, but he loved it. His customers were what kept him working. He loved his customers, and they loved him. It was that deep customer relationships that he had built over decades and multiple generations. That's what drove him, and that's why they called him the legend. And now we see companies today of all different types doing exactly the same thing, building legendary customer engagement, just like Papa Vic did. It's just today, it's a little bit different. We use technology to execute this at a completely different scale. And so today, we're going to talk at Signal. And we're going to spend the rest of the day talking about the path to legendary customer engagement and diving into how we're helping companies of all types to achieve this. Now, we have this front row seat. We work with 160,000 companies across every continent, across every industry. And we get to see what the most innovative companies are doing with Twilio to engage with their customers. And it really involves three things that every company is doing. First, like Popovic, you have to show up. You have to be there. You have to drive more interactions with your customers. So how does that work? That's how you stay top of mind. That's how you stay relevant. That's how you maintain the right to talk to your customers and ultimately to sell something to them. The more your customers are willing to pay attention to you, the more they let you into their inboxes, the more they let you onto their lock screens or their phone, the more you're able to engage. And to do that successfully, you need to use the channels of communication that your customers are using. That's why we've been investing in all of these channels for all these years that allow you to engage with your customers where they are. We started with voice calls in 2008, then we added text messages, and then chat, and then video, and now Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp, and more, and now with SendGrid, email, the list keeps going. But customers tell us that they find that the whole point is using the right channel for the right interaction, and that's what's key. And each customer, each end user, has their own preferences. And so you need to move quickly to learn how those preferences are changing and build to address the rapidly evolving landscape that's out there so that you can answer your customers' preferences. And that's why customers tell us that having one engagement platform for all of these channels is critical. It helps you move quickly. But it's not enough just to have the channels and to drive more interactions. You have to orchestrate them in a way that creates an amazing customer experience. You know, we've all had those experiences where disconnected, siloed systems create a horrible experience for us as a customer because one system doesn't know what the other system is doing. You know, like the bad IVR where you have to tell it your 10-digit account number and tell it your mom's dog's maiden name, and then you wait on hold and you reach the agent, and the first thing they ask you is, what's your account number? Right? Or, or support when you contact support and they have no idea the things that you've bought. Or when marketing sends you geriatric products. Look, I'm only 42, okay? I don't. These systems, they need to talk to each other in order to provide a great customer experience. So that's the second thing that great companies do. They connect the journey. And they make it so all these interactions add up to a single, sensical customer journey. You know, my Papa Vic, the way he did this was, he would show up, he would place the order, the goods showed up at the store, and they could call him at any time. In fact, there were legendary stories about a customer saying, hey, I need one roller, and he would put it in his car and he would drive over and deliver it. That was a connected journey if I've ever heard one. But it was simple back then. It was one guy in a bunch of stores. But now it's harder. You have all these processes, we have all these systems, we're operating at a completely different scale and the journey is much more complex. And companies buy apps for all these different parts of that customer life cycle. But it's not just a matter of having these apps. It's not even a matter of shuttling data back and forth between these apps to try to sync them up. 
This journey is actually your brand. This journey is your promise. It's your customer experience. And, that what make, uh, and, and that's what makes some companies so delightful to interact with. It's because they've thought through how all these parts connect to each other. So how do companies do it? Well, you need the building blocks of engagement, APIs. That's what lets you express this ideal journey and not get boxed into the limitations of some app. And the process of connecting it, it's a creative one. You can't buy this, you have to build it. It's the act of listening to your customers, hearing what they need from you, hearing what would make it a better experience, building that, and then listening some more and finding the next place you can improve it. That's the process. And that's why we've been get building this platform of engagement for the last 11 years, to enable just that. Everything from the channels, through the APIs that let you build all the amazing things, to the engagement cloud that lets you deliver those apps as a platform even faster. This is what we have been building for the last 11 years, the ability for you to connect this journey. Because we believe that every company that is going to survive or thrive in this digital era needs to be building to connect their unique journey. But third, and last, is really the goal of all of this. You know, once you drive more interactions by using the channels your customers need, once you connect the journey and listen and build, is the goal of it all. And that goal is best expressed by somebody that I've had the pleasure to get to know over the last year. Skip Potter, the CTO of Nike, expresses this goal incredibly well. He says, our goal is to build direct, unbreakable relationships with customers. Direct, unbreakable relationships with customers. Just like Popovic did. I mean, they came to his funeral. Direct, unbreakable relationships. And when we look across 160,000 customers, we see the best companies are using technology to build relationships at scale. And even though the technology and the scale is entirely different from what my Papa Vic was doing, the one thing that doesn't change is people's desire to be heard. People's desire to feel important. That's the source of loyalty. And that's why the best companies invest in creating these lasting relationships. And so today, we're going to spend the rest of the day talking about and diving into how companies are progressing down this path towards legendary customer engagement and how Twilio is helping them to do that. First, we're going to talk about how channels like voice and SMS are helping to drive more interactions. And you know, I hear from a lot of customers who asked me about our acquisition earlier this year of SendGrid and how email and other channels are playing into this strategy. So we're going to hear from Samir about how SendGrid is expanding our platform. Next, we're going to see how application platforms are changing the way companies are building this connected journey, starting with the contact center, with Flex, our application platform that is already transforming the contact center industry. And last, well, we've got a little something new to share that we think will help you create lasting relationships at scale. So I'd like to now invite up the CEO of Twilio SendGrid to tell you about how we're driving more interactions via email and beyond. Please welcome up the CEO of Twilio SendGrid, Samir Delakia. Samir, come on down. All right, good morning. Good morning. It is so hard to believe. It's barely been six months since we completed our acquisition and joined the Twilio family. But we're so excited to, have be, to be able to bring email to this amazing Twilio engagement platform and add just one more building block because email is a critical channel to drive those interactions. Let me tell you a little bit about why. Like, why email? Well, first off, because it's so ubiquitous. It's everywhere. 3.8 billion people around the world use email all day, all the time. Show of hands, how many people here checked their email this morning? How many checked multiple times today, yesterday? How many checked it in bed last night, this morning, first thing when you got out of bed, took it into the bathroom with you? You're checking, wait, how many of you are checking your email right now? <laughs> Cut it out. 
but you get the point. You're on your device. You're in that inbox all day, all the time. And brands know that. Businesses know that. And that's why it's such a critical channel to drive those interactions. Uh, the second reason is it is crazy durable. Ask yourself this question. How many times in your life have you moved physically? Like your home address, how many, how many times has that changed? Where business is trying to track you down and figure out where you've moved to. Now think about how many times have you changed your personal email address? Like in my case, that's a ratio of like 10 to 1. I move all the time. I never change my personal email address. It's super durable. And businesses know that, and that's why they love it as a channel over which to engage with you and to send you those critical notifications. And the last one, businesses love email because they know that that is where we as consumers go and search. It's where we keep track of all the interactions that we have had with a given business because it actually acts as the system of record for our digital lives. When it's tax time, I go into my inbox and I say receipt, donations, and all the receipts of every donation I've made this year is there. It's our system of record. So brands know that that's where we live. Okay, so, so that's why email, any digital strategy intending to build what Jeff just referred to as legendary customer relationships, legendary engagement, has to include email. Okay, but now why SendGrid for email? Um, well, we've been working over the past decade to put email in the toolbox of every developer and marketer in the world. In fact, over 80,000 companies have partnered with SendGrid to send those mission-critical uh, interactions over the email channel on their behalf. We are sending on their behalf over 50 billion, with a B, emails every single month to over, as Jeff said earlier, 3 billion unique email recipients. What does that translate to? That translates to roughly half a trillion. That's a lot of zeros. Half a trillion emails per year that we are sending on behalf of our customers. Lots of interaction. It's a crazy high-scale platform, let me tell you. It works amazingly well for the smallest of startups to the largest of enterprises. We pioneered this email API category almost a decade ago to make it easy for every developer to enable email inside of their applications for all these very um, important use cases like a sign-up confirmation when you sign up. If I hit the password reset button, it's going to send me an email into my inbox. If I, buy, I hit the buy button, it's got to send me a receipt or an order confirmation. Uh, and we've been doing that for years. We try to make it super, super simple for our customers, our developers, to be able to do that. We're the industry leader in this cloud email category by virtually any measure, and we're, we're so humbled and proud that some of the largest and best senders on the planet have chosen to partner with us to improve the success of their email programs. Um, I want to just get a quick read of the audience here. How many folks out here have either as an individual or for the companies you work for used SendGrid at some point uh, in, your, in your lives? Oh, wow, that's quite a few. That's awesome. OK, great. Um, well, so first off, for those who raised your hand, um, thank you. Uh, thank you for your trust, and, uh, and thank you for your business. Um, among the 80,000, we, we're, we're super grateful. Uh, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, uh, we're new to Twilio, and we would love for you to come join us. We would love for you to add email to your Twilio-powered applications, because it is such a critically important channel of communication. I wanted to tell you a little bit about why I think the first group of people raised their hands. Um, why have they already made the switch over to SendGrid? Well, the first one is simple. It's, it's they're moving to cloud. They're, you know, businesses have been using email for decades. You know, they're, it's, it's remarkable how many businesses, especially enterprises, still have racks and stacks of mail servers, SMTP servers in their on-prem data centers. And for all the same reasons that we've moved, tried to move every other workload to the cloud for elasticity and pay-as-you-go and all the other obvious benefits, our customers have modernized their email programs and moved to our SendGrid cloud infrastructure. The second, though, is, is probably uh, even equally, if not more important to them, which is they know that we can help them improve their deliverability. So sending can be easy, receiving is hard. What I mean by that, uh, for those not familiar with the term, deliverability is the percentage of emails that your business is sending that actually make it to the inbox. And these are wanted mail. This is not spam. It is harder than ever for a good sender to get their messages into the inbox because the Gmails and the Yahoos of the world, they assume that the messages you are sending are unwanted until you prove otherwise and you build a sender reputation and 
we can help our customers and have for the past decade build that sending reputation using our technology platform and equally our, our incredible team of email deliverability experts that can help you with your programs. Our customers enjoy industry leading well into the high 90s uh, deliverability rates, which is truly unheard of. And then finally, uh, they really do love using uh, one single platform for all of their um, email needs, not just the transactional stuff, not just your password resets and order confirmations, as I mentioned earlier, but also your promotional stuff, your newsletters, your drip campaigns, a welcome series, a special offer. You can do all of that from within SendGrid now that we added our marketing campaigns application, which I'll talk more about. So that's uh, why I think those 80,000 companies have made the switch over to SendGrid uh, generally, for those who haven't yet made the switch, I'll tell you, there's never been a better time to make that switch. Why? Because we're continuing to innovate and enhance our platform in, in, across both of the major product line areas that we serve. So I'll start with email API. As I mentioned, tens of thousands of customers. We've worked with well over a million developers in this area. We try to listen intently and wear our customer shoes uh, and understand what they need next. And they would say, well, we all have these sign-up forms uh, where we're trying to capture a new email address. And it turns out that it sounds so simple, but to actually check the email to make sure that it's valid, I need to check the syntax. Is there a typo? Did somebody just do a keyboard smash? Uh, it, it's, it's actually far more complicated than one would think. And we asked ourselves a question, as Jeff mentioned earlier, that uh, we all ask at uh, Twilio all the time. Why isn't there an, e an API for that? And in fact, today, now there is. Introducing the email validation API. It is uh, a truly a game changer for those in the email world. It's awesome. It's super simple, a single API call, and it's working against one of the industry's largest data sets, half a trillion emails a year, and it will uh, use machine learning to get smarter and render a verdict for you on every single email that comes in. Is that valid, risky, or invalid? With that insight, you can reduce the number of bounces that you get when you send email, which will improve your deliverability, which ultimately improves your customer experience. Uh, but we're not just doing it with email API. We're doing it in, in the area of our marketing campaigns product. We just GA'd last month a new automations capability for marketing automation. Uh, it allows our marketers to put in place multi-part series campaigns, email campaigns that allow you to say, start here, do this, wait four days, do that, and so on. Adding marketing campaigns uh, with automations capability uh, makes it so that you can really tailor the communications you're sending based on where the customer is in their journey or even trigger it based on actions that they are taking, a really powerful new capability. And then finally, as Jeff mentioned earlier, we're continually uh, adding new channels of engagement to our engagement platform, and we're doing just that with the introduction today of ads. Uh, it's in private beta. Uh, ads is a, a, a new offering within marketing campaigns that synchronizes across all of your email contacts and allows you to send targeted ads across the three, ma three of the major uh, advertising plas platforms. So you've got Facebook, we've got Instagram, and now we've got Google Ads. All three of them managed from a single UI, and most importantly, being informed by the intelligence of your email channel, making your ads better, and therefore your ads being able to make your email campaigns better, seamlessly integrated, a really powerful tool. So lots of great detail about all the SendGrid stuff uh, throughout the uh, conference. We have over 20 sessions. Uh, we hope you come and learn more about uh, what we're doing here at SendGrid as part of this new acquisition. Please come and check it out. All right, so that's everything about just email, why email, why SendGrid. Um, I want to now talk to you a little bit about um, when you combine SendGrid with all of the existing Twilio APIs. You use all these building blocks in combination, that's when the magic really starts. As Jeff said, you can't think about these things in isolation. We need to connect the journey for our customers. And we're seeing more and more of our customers, this is just a small sampling of some of our joint customers, who over the past six months we've started to see using the building blocks in tandem of, say, the SMS API with the email API. Um, let me give you one particular example that I thought was, was really interesting. Uh, Zillow Group, a, an incredible market leader in the real estate technology space, real estate being one of the oldest industries uh, in the world, and uh, they're trying to help with what an experience that is arguably one of the most stressful experiences in any of our lives, which is finding and buying a new home. 
And so what they've done is said, hey, I can use technology and communications and transform the way that we engage with our customers by using communications better and smarter, by really meeting my customers where they live, and by choosing the right channel of communication so that I can deliver the right message over the right channel at the right time, and I'm going to stitch them all together. Uh, so what did they do? They started out by just kind of mapping out the customer journey and, uh, and then choosing the optimal channel for each one of those interactions and using all these building blocks within the Twilio engagement platform uh, to assemble it all together. So just imagine this example. Let's say that I live in, in New York City. We work with a great set of teams of Zillow Group in New York, uh, and I'm looking for a new apartment. And I want to find something with this many bedrooms, that many um, bathrooms, this much square footage. Maybe it's in this cool new hip neighborhood. Uh, and um, the first thing the application is going to do is check to see, OK, the second a new property hits the market that meets my criteria, it's going to send me an SMS text notification. right? Because that is a time sensitive message. It wants to deliver it over the right channel. SMS is a great channel for that. But it's not going to stop there. It also knows that I'm going to want a lot more information about that property. So then it'll send me a property summary or a property digest into my email inbox. And that'll include pictures. It might include a walkthrough video tour. It'll have statistics. It might even have attachments, disclosure schedules, things that are perfect for an email in the email channel, not great over SMS. So they use that channel for that. They're not done there. They'll know that I may go into that app and be like, ooh, that looks like a perfect new home for me. I want to click the button and talk to a realtor about that place and set up an appointment. So they can click a button inside of the app, and it will call out to find the best realtor to show me that particular property. When that agent accepts the lead, it immediately uses all of our Twilio uh, voice APIs to set up a conference call and patches them in, patches them in real time. That is how you stitch together in one illustrative example, all of these different channels in one way to create a delightful, seamless customer experience. It's across all these channels. The customer or the user probably doesn't even notice it. It's hard to do. All the amazing doers in this audience are the ones who can do that. And so that's really my challenge to all of you is to uh, make sure that you all are thinking about how I can use these building blocks in the engagement platform to create delightful and legendary customer engagement, as Jeff described. OK, so lots of concepts here and, and, a, and a big pitch for why to add Twilio, SendGrid, and email into your Twilio-powered apps. I want to show you just how easy it is for you to do that. Uh, we are going to show you how easy it is to weave email into your Twilio-powered app. We've worked for a decade to make it trivial, trivially simple for developers to use our API. In fact, 90% of our customers can go from signing up for an account to sending their first email in less than 10 minutes. So to show you just how easy that is to do, uh, I want to invite up on the stage uh, our senior director of product, Jen Kessler, and our uh, developer evangelist, Marcos Placona. Come on out, guys. So as Samir said, it's just as easy, easy for a developer to add SendGrid email to an app as it is to integrate with any of the Twilio channels. So today, Marcos and I are going to show you live how easy it is to add SendGrid email to an app that is already integrated with Twilio. Samir said 10 minutes. We're going to do it in less than five. Let's do it. So. Um, to show you this, we have a working but half-built Twilio app. It responds with the first half of a joke when you text it. Let's give it a try. Pick an emoji. How many hipsters does it take to screw in a light bulb? I know everyone's been wondering that, so let's find out. So this is the working Twilio app that's leaving us all hanging. And we've hidden the answer in, you guessed it, a SendGrid email template. So we are going to find out how many hipsters it does in fact take to screw in a light bulb by adding SendGrid email to our app. First, we're going to import the SendGrid library. 
we're going to grab the helper functions that we need from that library. We're going to set the API key from a cleverly hidden environment variable that we have, because Marcos and I know what happens when you share your API key with thousands of developers. We're going to need the grab, to grab the phone number from the text message sent. And we're going to use that phone number to look up the corresponding email address in the Signal database. Because we're going to make sure this app only works for people who registered for Signal. So if you're watching this from home, make sure you're here in person next year. <laughs> we're now going to create a mail object. This is what's going to create the email itself. We're going to add the sender, me, to the mail object. And now we're going to make sure the email goes to the right person, you, the sender of the text message. We're now going to add the ability for you to unsubscribe from the email. This is going to keep us compliant. Now, all we need is the email itself. To create the template, we'll use SunGrid's simple UI. Let's take a look. It's a drag and drop editor with an intuitive UI. Here you can see how simple it is to add various modules and create beautiful emails. So back to our code. We just need to call the template ID, and it will automatically grab the hopefully hilarious email to send to you, because the Twilio half of our app only texted the first half of the joke. We need SendGrid for the second. As you can see, we've completely disaggregated the content creation process from the code, since in most cases, two different people, or even teams, do each job. In this case, I made the first version of the email, grabbed the template ID for the code, and then a designer went into the UI to make the email look signal-worthy. No code updates needed, no matter how many iterations to the design there were. Now we just need to add the code to send the email itself. That's it. Let's test it out. It works. <laughs> now it's your turn. Go ahead and text your favorite emoji to the number on the screen. In the meantime, let's check my email to find out the answer to the question. How many hipsters does it take to screw in a light bulb? It's a really obscure number. You've probably never heard of it. <laughs> With Twilio and SendGrid together, you have complete programmability and control across all of your most important communication channels. There has never been a better time to add Twilio SendGrid to your email applications. Well, actually, to your applications. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear for Jen and Marcos. All right, so email and now ads, in addition to SMS and voice and chat and video and more, these are the channels that you need to drive more interactions with your customers. Now, connecting the journey. You know, through the years, We've seen customers build so many use cases on top of Twilio, yet few have, it's been, have been as fascinating to me as what's been happening in the contact center. See, customers have shown us that the status quo has just stopped working, that they had to settle for legacy on-prem systems that were difficult to customize and impossible to maintain, and they felt stuck, unable to innovate, unable to build the customer experiences that they wanted. And so we answered the call with a new kind of software, an application platform called Flex that offered the speed of software as a service and the flexibility of APIs. And we announced Flex just a year ago based on the observations of working with so many of these early customers. And it turns out that we have struck a nerve because the customer response has been absolutely tremendous. 
In the hundreds of customer meetings that we have had about Flex, we see customers' eyes just light up when they finally get to see how absolutely everything is programmable. Any idea they have, they can realize and turn into reality. And that innovative spirit of all those developers are now applicable to the contact center. And it's amazing when they have this aha moment when they realize what it's like to own their own roadmap. Now this product, just announced a year ago, is already shaking things up in the contact center industry. I mean, a year ago, if you had told me that the legacy vendors in the space would have even heard of Flex, I would have thought you were crazy. Let alone buying up all the ads around Moscone for Signal this year. I mean, isn't that crazy? But you know what? I think they're afraid. I think they're afraid of what happens when we, when we unleash the creative ability of millions of software developers to innovate in the contact center. So to see what we have been up to, please welcome up the Flex Head of Engineering, Jessica Pop. Jessica, come on up. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone. I'm so excited to be at my first signal. And as Jeff mentioned, I'm the head of engineering for Flex, and I've been building software for over 20 years, and I'm more excited about Flex than any other product I've ever worked on. And part of why I'm so excited is that as part of one of my roles years ago, dinosaurs still roamed the earth and we didn't have smartphones, I actually ran a contact center as part of my job. We had racked PBXs, we had bought software from a provider, and we really had very limited capability to change what we had. We got to the point where we had custom field one, custom field two, custom field three, and we tell our agents with each campaign how to use those fields. And 15 years later, not much has changed. We still can't tailor that contact center experience to meet our business. And we've got our legacy providers that we all know, like Avaya and Cisco and Genesis, and they're mostly on-prem. They require support and maintenance, and they're expensive and hard to change. And now 15% of us have moved to the cloud. But we're realizing with these SaaS solutions, they're neither scalable or flexible in the way that we need. The state of today's contact center is not built for continuous improvement. Now think about it for a minute. What if you had the complete freedom as a developer to build that contact center that your business needs with the speed of being able to deploy it in the cloud and with the developers that you already have? This is why we created Flex. Flex is a programmable contact center platform and what that means to you as a developer, is every contact center you build on Flex is unique. It gives you complete control to customize that contact center experience. It allows you to ship features faster because you're using tools that you're already familiar with, like Twilio's APIs, React Framework, and Studio. And ultimately, you're improving the productivity in your call centers because you're able to integrate those four different apps that you're asking your agents to use today into a single user interface. And now Flex has been GA for less than a year at this point. And in 2019, we've seen five times more customer interactions happening over Flex. And we've shipped over 65 enhancements and features in that time. And we've grown our ecosystem to over 250 system integration partners. And I bet some of those partners are out there today, and I want to thank you for the work you've done with Flex. But guess what? We are just getting started. Some of the best customer brands are building on Flex today. And that's because the developers from those brands are adopting the power of programmability to get the solution that's completely customized for their business. And that's not it. They're able to do this faster than ever. For example, let's take Shopify. They had several apps they wanted to integrate. And they were able to get to an MVP in four weeks and into production in four months with Flex. 
And Scorpion was able to improve their contact center operations. And they've been able to reduce their handle time by 30%. But let me zoom into Lyft for a minute. We've all used Lyft. Some of you may have taken a Lyft ride to get here today. But let's think about Lyft's contact center experience. They need to be able to support, both support that driver and that rider. And they needed to respond with a contact center that was able to support this. So let's take a look at what Lyft has learned in their Flex journey. I always think that great customer service has a soul, it has a personality, and if they're expressing empathy in a way that's not forced, then they've expressed to you that you're important and that your business is important. If you think about the best customer service, I'm talking to you as a human. I understand your need, I am acknowledging what you've experienced, and then I'm helping you resolve that how best I can. What we're trying to do at Lyft is really put the humans or the customers at the center of our equation. Who is that customer? What do they need? And how do you bring that technology to bear in a way that's easy for the customer to get what they want? Twilio Flex is the backbone of a lot of our communication. But what Twilio solved for us was not only the omni-channel problem, so we could have multiple channels, but because it's a customizable interface, it is going to allow us to pull all of that information from our customer record system into the one associate interface. And so we can have associates using one tool and one tool only that has all of these components served for them so that they can easily and efficiently handle for customers. When an agent answers a call, Flex gives that agent all kinds of information about who that customer is, what they have told us their problems are, so that we can immediately start off with greeting that driver by name and then understanding what their need might be. That's just a game changer. If someone can receive a call and you can talk to that person by name, and you can at least anticipate what they're calling for, even if it's just three seconds of relief, they just feel like, oh, someone's already listening to me. Saving a second of an associate time, it sounds meaningless, but when you're talking about millions of contacts over the course of a year, that one second adds up to a lot of money. What we really fell in love with on Flex is the complete customization. You can create the system that you believe and you want to serve for your customers. For my engineers and product team members, it was like a candy jar in a candy store. It was this opportunity to have constant iteration to make things better. It goes back to caring. With Twilio, we can help ensure that associates are actually spending time looking at the resources they need instead of trying to figure out where things are. With Twilio, we can create a seamless, fantastic customer support experience. We're unleashing and harnessing everyone's ideas and everyone's thoughts. That's just fantastic for us. Now, I love what Jamie said there, saving one second on a single agent experience over millions of conversations in a year. That really builds up. We have two leaders from Lyft with here to us today. Please join me in welcoming Jamie and Raj to the stage. Thank you both for joining us here. We wanted to share a little bit with your experience, so I had a few questions for you. So I'll start with every ride I've taken has been a smooth journey, but can you talk to us about how you design and deliver that experience for millions of riders and drivers? I love to hear that, Jessica, thanks. Um, I think as all of us know, we strive to create transportation experiences that are dependable and consistently reliably. And all of us know that's really hard. It has to be earned. For us at Lyft, it starts with a deep understanding of our customers. What do our drivers and our riders need and want? And then how do we constantly assess and use that understanding so that we're in constantly innovating and consistently improving the experiences that we deliver? Great. Thanks, Jamie. Now, Raj, Lyft has over 900 developers, from what I understand, and you're constantly looking to use technology and creativity in your solutions. How do you choose between what you build yourself versus what you look for in the marketplace? Yeah, it's a good question, and it's something that we struggle with. Um, when your mission is to build the world's best transportation, and you're linking drivers and riders, and there are new um, modes of transportation coming online every day, from scooters to bikes, and in the future, autonomous vehicles, it's very tempting to want to say that you need to build all of it. Um, but that's definitely not the reality, and as like any other organization, we are constrained. We have um, a limited set of resources, and we must focus. 
So we've been pushing ourselves to focus more on the things that we're uniquely positioned to build and um, you know, bring to the table um, in a way that we'll need to innovate on them personally. Um, so that looks like our user experience, it looks like integrations with transit agencies. Um, and then there are even some interesting pieces inside um, that other organizations have done, um, mapping, routing, market, market, and market, and, uh, market supply and demand balance forecasting. Uh, but then there are lots of great components that we should just be reusing and taking off the shelf. Um, and we see this like, uh, as a very clear point of view in our customer support world. Um, there are great components that we're not uniquely positioned to make better on our own. Um, and we can rely on Twilio and Flex in particular um, to give us great components like integrated voice response for our customers um, or uh, integrated telephony for our agents. And now we've been able to refocus our, our teams on things that are far more unique to what Lyft is in the position to deliver. Great. And Jamie, can you tell us what you're thinking about using Flex for in the future? Yeah. So as Raj just kind of talked through, our current support infrastructure is a pretty complex set of integrations across many different tools, some of them homegrown, some of them purchased. Tw Twilio Flex will be the center of that support platform. And we're really excited about that because if you think about as we expand um, the different types of transportation through modes or services that we'll be offering, all of our associates need to become experts in all kinds of different customers and experiences. Twilio allows us the ability to create one and only one tool for associate interface because we're able to customize and adapt so all of those unique and different experiences that we need to support our customers into one interface that's easy. We expect it to unlock a lot of quality and a lot of efficiency through that ease of that unique associate experience. And finally, before you go, do you have any words of advice for developers that are considering Flex? Yeah, um, I think a lot of the developers in the room here um, and ones that would uh, integrate with Flex um, are trying to solve a human process problem. Um, we all see sort of like a great human process out there in the world that uh, we believe that we can make better or faster or more enabled with technology. Um, and so my advice is, and we see this playing out in Nashville with our agents um, where our, our designers, our engineers, our PMs, and, and, and as you saw in the video, our, our agents are basically co-located and co-developing solutions. So we'll see a pocket of agents doing amazing work, like hacking around the systems that we have, like figuring out how to serve customers really well. And we can see that, generalize that into a set of things that we can really quickly prototype with Flex. It's been amazing how quickly we've been able to bring things up and iterate and, and take feedback. Um, and in that sort of like co-development sphere, we're able to find those gems of processes that we can make better, um, build great scaffolding around them, around uh, using the components in Flex. Um, iterate quickly and then make, make them really general and available to the rest of our agents. So it's one of those things that we generally approach um, most problems with at Lyft that are physical and digital in nature. We're looking for that example um, of a problem we're trying to solve. We're looking for examples of where great processes have been built and that we basically fortify those with great tech. Great. That makes so much sense. Thank you both for joining us here today. So thank you both to Jamie and Raj for taking time out of their schedule to join us here at Signal. And I think as developers, we can really relate to what Raj said there in terms of the value of being able to prototype and improve that solution iteratively. Now, as you heard me mention earlier, we are really just getting started. We're continuing to grow the Flex R&D team and invest in the future of Flex. And as I look at it from an engineering perspective, we're focused in three different areas. And first, we want to be able to continuously ship improvements and features so that as developers, you're not focusing on building contact center infrastructure. We want you, as developers, to be focusing on writing the code that matters to your business. And as an example of this, I'm pleased to announce today that we have native Zendesk CTI integration with Flex. And we also need it to be easy for developers to interact and build on the Flex platform. Now, last year, we introduced Autopilot. And for those of you that might not be familiar with Autopilot, it's a conversational AI platform that includes NLU and machine learning to be able to parse data intents and tasks. 
And so as a result, it makes autopilot makes it easy for you to build messaging bots and add intelligence to IVRs. And today, we're announcing that Autopilot has gone GA, and we're adding the addition of template builders as well as a testing simulator right in the Flex console, all to improve your developer experience with Flex. <laughs> and finally, we're looking at scalability, because we want you to be able to build with confidence. And earlier this year, we made some task router improvements that for some of our largest customers that have thousands of agents, we've been able to improve the time it takes for a task to get assigned to an agent by 17x. And now I've got a really exciting addition to the Twilio portfolio of products that's going to make Flex even better. But let's pause for a moment and consider where we are today. We have APIs that can make and receive phone calls. But what are you able to do with that call media? How are you able to add new AI capabilities, such as real-time transcriptions and sentiment analysis using that media? There should be an API for that. Announcing the Media Streams API that is allowing you direct access to the real-time voice media of your call. And this is not just limited to, any, to what you can build. You can build with some of the companies that we're working with, such as Google and Gridspace and Amazon, to do cool things like real-time transcriptions I mentioned, or maybe fraud detection, or conversation analytics. Now let's take a quick look at media streams. So media streams should look really familiar if you've written any Twimmel, which I expect most of you here in the audience have. We've got a new Twimmel verb called start, and, excuse me, we've got a new Twimmel verb called start, and we have a new noun set, one for SIPREC connections and one for WebSocket streams. And you can use this verb and noun combination today to add to any existing Twimmel app or studio flow that you've built to immediately start streaming the audio to your application or to a third-party application. OK, it's time for us to build something cool. I'd like to bring senior software engineer Wan Jen Lee to the stage. Thank you, Jessica. My name is Wan Jen, and I'm a software engineer working on the Flex team. And today, I'm incredibly excited to be able to show off some of the things that we've been building this past year. Now, if you've never used Flex or even seen Flex, then take a look at the screen behind me. On the left-hand side, you'll see that the agent is handling tasks of multiple types, video, voice, chat, all built on top of Twilio's platform. And on the right, you'll see that we've gone and integrated our own custom CRM and knowledge base. That way, while the agent is conversing with the customer, they can look up any questions or problems in the knowledge base. But it doesn't stop there. You can build in your own custom integration, such as CRM with Salesforce. But it's not just the agent desktop that's programmable. All of Flex is programmable. So let's actually head over to my laptop, and I can show off the supervisor's team view. When you first log into Flex, this is what it looks like when you log into the supervisor's team view. And you can click into any single interaction and monitor what's going on, listen to the call, or read the transcript of the chat. But as a developer, what if you want to do more? You can extend, you can modify, you can make something bigger, you can make something smaller. You can change anything that you want to best fit the supervisors of your contact center. I've even gone ahead and integrated this year's Signal 2019 color themes. But that's pretty simple. I want to spend the rest of this demo going through some of the ways that we can customize our supervisor team view and show off how really flexible Flex actually is. 
So a question that many of our customers ask is, how can I understand the call origin patterns in my contact center? Well, by writing one simple React component, I can answer this question right now. Now, when my Flex Instant reloads, we actually see that at the bottom of the screen, I have this new map drawer. And when I click on it, I now have a heat map representing where all of the calls are coming from. I see that there are calls coming out of Dallas, even a hotspot here over San Francisco. But it doesn't have to be a heat map. If you'd like to build a component to represent your data in some other way, you can do that. If you wanted it to be a chart of latitude and longitude, you can make that customization. With just simple React components, if you're a React developer, then you can write any Flex component. Another question that we hear from customers is, how can I understand the context of a voice call without having to lose a lot of time jumping into the call in the middle and having to monitor? I have another solution for that with my own custom React component. Previously, when I had to look into an interaction, I actually had to click in and hit a monitor button. But now I can click into any chat and see the transcript. I even see here that I have an Abigail Adams. If y'all didn't know, this is the second first lady of the United States. Pretty interesting. <laughs> but now with this transcript, oh, this one's already ended. Let's find a new one. Pick a different one. OK, I'll come back to this and show it. But with this transcript ability now, I can read from the very top to the very bottom of the entire call. But it doesn't just stop there. What if I wanted to do something crazy, something to show off how programmable Flex is? Well, the other day, I was taking a lift home from work. And what if, as a supervisor, I like to provide rides home to my agents? I can also build a component for that. Now, when I select an agent, I can actually see that I can pick any quantity amount to send them a lift code. That way, if they're staying late, all, they, all I have to do is select the amount, generate a code, and send an SMS to my agent. But it doesn't just stop there. You can write any React component, any customization that you'd like. And so the other day, I didn't have much time. I got home from work, and I was pretty hungry. I ordered a pizza. As a supervisor, sometimes maybe I should send a pizza to my team if they're staying late. Let's write one last component to do that. Now, when my page refreshes, you'll see that I've customized my, life, my left side navigation bar. And now there's a little pizza icon. When I click into it, I can select all the different pizzas I want and send them to my team. Let's go ahead and just select all the pizzas and maybe throw in a salad on the side. Now, my entire UI has just changed, and I've sent a pizza pronto to my team. I hope I've been able to demonstrate the power programmability with Flex and that you can customize and you can extend anything that you want. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Jessica. Thank you so much, Jen, for walking us through that awesome demo. And what Jen showed us, what she really showed us, was the power of programmability that's only possible through Flex. And one last thing before I wrap up, I wanted to tell you that Signal is being powered by a Flex contact center. So if you have any questions, you can call, text, or email, and our Flex agents will be there to help you. Now go out and build that custom contact center. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you, Jen. And
Thank you to our legendary sponsor, Proficient, for building this amazing experience for you all for the next two days. If you need some help with anything here at, at Signal, you just text, you can email. It's all powered by Flex downstairs in the Expo Hall. You can see the little glass booth. You can see the agents working it. They'll even give you a tour if you want. So please uh, go check that out. And uh, the other thing, by the way, we love doing all of our demos live. You know it's real because we write the code. We do the most dangerous demos on the planet. So let's hear it again for Jen. Now, the contact center is not the only technology here that's changing. You know, we know technology is constantly evolving and changing our lives in the process. Yet the megatrends, the ones that truly change our lives, they seem to come along uh, once every decade or so, if you think about it. Right? You think about the 2000s, right? The web was relatively new, and every company was running around building their web presence and investing in building great websites, and every company got on the web in the 2000s. But then, 2008, the App Store launched, and the next decade, the 2010s, well, that was about the App Store. It was about every company building apps to engage with customers, and every company went and built apps, and there's now about half a billion apps in all of the app stores. But, you know, it seems like we download less apps than we used to, and a lot of companies have built apps, and it's starting to feel like that era is winding down. And so I get asked by customers all the time, what's next? What is coming as the next big mega trend that we are going to have to understand in order to stay relevant and engage with our customers? Is it Alexa and Google Home and Siri? Is it bots? Right? What is it? Well, the beauty of the platform that we are, we get to see the interactions between 160,000 companies and billions of people all around the world, and we start to see these patterns forming. You know, first of all, take SMS. We send up to 200 million text messages a day. And most of these are notifications, right? One-way notifications. In fact, it was novel just a few years ago when you got a notification from a company, like when you checked into a hotel or when you were ready to board your flight or when your food was about to get delivered. That was new and it was novel. But it's actually rare that you can reply to any of these notifications. Think about it. In fact, at Twilio, we looked it up, 75% of the SMS-enabled phone numbers on our platform, our customers have not configured any kind of handler for those inbound messages, just not listening. So try it, I challenge you, next time you get an alert from a company, you get one of these notifications, just reply, something simple, just say thank you, and just see what happens. Sometimes you'll get, you know, like an automated message that says, you know, thank you for you know, thank you for uh, contacting us. But then they'll usually shift you over to another channel. Please call if you need help. Or go to, your, go to this website or send us an email, right? They're always sending you to some other place. I love, I saw one with a coupon. It said, need help, call us. And I can just imagine calling, hello, I'm calling about the coupon? Like, they're not gonna have any idea what I'm talking about, right? It's crazy. Sometimes you get a bunch of, get a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo. Text stop for stop, help for help. Text blah, 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 blah. You're like, okay, I don't. Clearly, I don't know what to do with this. And then most of the time, however, you get this. Nothing at all. Absolutely no response. It's rare that you get a response from a company that seems like they actually want to talk to you, that seems like they value you, they want to hear from you, which is so strange because companies spend so much money in marketing to acquire customers. So much money. They spend so much money on surveys to hear what you're thinking, to give them feedback. Yet when you try to talk to them, most companies aren't listening. And you know, a funny thing happened. Last year, we launched a new API, the Twilio API for WhatsApp. And when our customers started engaging with their customers in WhatsApp, sending them messages, a crazy thing happened. 53% of those messages got a reply from the customer. 53% of those messages the customers replied to. Our customers were startled. And now leading companies are realizing that it's time to start listening. And I've been having these experiences more and more in recent years. In fact, I wanted to share one of those experiences with you. It was at Nordstrom. Now, a couple years ago, I lost a bunch of weight, which is great for a bunch of reasons. It is not good for your wardrobe. 
especially for those items that you wear only once in a while, which for me is a suit. And I realized on a Tuesday afternoon that I had a wedding the following weekend on Saturday, and my suit did not fit at all. And anything I buy needs to get shortened, because I'm a short person. And I was traveling Wednesday through Friday. This is a true story. And I was like, okay, I am screwed here. But I realized that I had a recent text message that I'd gotten from a Nordstrom sales rep after I'd made a purchase. He just said, thank you for, thank you for coming in. And so I tried it out. I replied to the message. And I said, hey, Francisco, I have a problem. I need a suit really quickly. I basically need to come in and buy it today so it can get shortened in time for my wedding Saturday. Can you help me? And sure enough, he replied, absolutely. Here's several ones that I have in stock in your size in our store. You can come by later today. I'll have them ready for you. I'll have you in and out in 10 minutes. Just try them on. Tell me which one you like. I'll have the tailor ready to mark it up with the little chalk, and you'll be good to go. And that's exactly what I did. I came in at 6 o'clock that day, did 10 minutes, tried them all on. They chalked it up. I left the store, bought my suit. A couple days later, I got a follow-up text message from him. Jeff, just wanted to let you know, your alterations are done. Your suit's ready to be picked up. I know you're traveling, coming on Saturday morning. By the way, we open at 10. And I did, and I came, picked it up at 10 o'clock. Suit was perfect, went to my wedding. <laughs> Let's hear it for Francisco. <laughs> but now here's the amazing part. A couple months later, I got a text message from Francisco. I said, hey Jeff, just wanted to let you know about the big uh, Nordstrom's anniversary sale. Now, ordinarily, I would not be open to having some random company send me news about a sale over text message. Yet when Francisco does it, I actually appreciated it because <laughs> he's someone I've built a relationship with. I know this person and I feel connected to him and I am open to hearing that, the news of the sale from Francisco. And you know what, this Nordstrom example, when I sat back and thought about it, is not alone. I am starting to have these experiences more and more. Take, for example, uh, a text thread I had with the Amazon driver a couple of months ago. It was Father's Day. They were stuck at the gate. They couldn't get into my dad's apartment complex to deliver my Father's Day gift. And if they hadn't texted me and I hadn't told them how to get in, my father would have had no Father's Day gift. What a delightful conversation, a great use case. And it's happening more and more. It's not just Nordstrom. It's not just Amazon. It's Macy's. It's stadiums and airports. I was in T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas last month, and you can text the people who maintain this bathroom. That was crazy, and it's, it's so many more experiences that we're having. The Denver airport, you can text for help. Ride sharing, of course, you can text your driver if you need help. When you get food delivered, you can text the delivery driver. Your car, you can now text with your service manager at Tesla to make an appointment. In banking, you can text with your banker at Morgan Stanley or Raymond James. Hotels, Sofitel, Four Seasons, Marriott, you can text with the concierge and the front desk. In real estate with Trulia and Zillow and Redfin, you can text with real estate agents. I recently had an experience on northface.com where I could text with a support agent there. You can text with Ashton Kutcher. You can text with your representative Rick Crawford if you're from Arkansas. You can even text this can of coffee. <laughs> Seriously, there's some dude who answers all the texts you send to that number. <laughs> we have reached a tipping point, people. The next big era of tech is the era of conversations. That's it. Conversations are eating apps as the most compelling, easiest to use ways to engage with the companies we do business with. Now look, sure, every company is gonna continue to have websites and continue to have mobile apps, that's great. But the most compelling engagements we are gonna have with the vast majority of companies will be done in messaging. Here's why. First of all, most importantly, it's easy. There's nothing to download. There's no call to action. You don't have to get people to do anything. It's as easy as sending a text message. And if the last few years have shown us anything, it's that people are tired of having to download apps for absolutely everything. You don't need all those apps. This is so easy. Second, the BYOD revolution. Bring your own device. Our workers at all of our companies are no longer sitting at desks with a desk phone behind a PBX. 
our employees, our contractors, they're out in the field working with customers and they're bringing their own cell phone with them. In fact, many of those employees and contractors are already texting with your customers. They're just doing it from their personal cell phone, which is a privacy and data mess. We need a better way to do it. And third, and most importantly, this just follows the natural behaviors that are already happening in the world. Of course, we all text with our friends and our family and our coworkers. That's what we do. That's how we keep in touch. And your customers are realizing that they should be engaging with you that way too. That's why they're all texting you. Think about that stat. 53% of messages were getting a reply. And this is all with today's technology. There are things coming down the pipe that are going to even accelerate this trend. You know, because it seems today like you need an app for a lot of transactions. If you're going to make an e-commerce purchase or buy an airline ticket, right, you need an app. You need that sophisticated workflow. But of course, the messaging apps like Apple Business Chat or WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, they are making it easier and easier and easier to replace all those transactions and do it right in messaging. You will be able to rebook an airline ticket inside of messaging or buy a pair of shoes or schedule an appointment all inside of an app. And any number of these transactional things will become possible in the next 12 to 24 months. More importantly is what's coming with the carriers, RCS. RCS is the biggest upgrade to SMS that has happened in the 40-year history of texting. And it's going to bring all that experiential and all that transactional stuff from the messaging apps into the default SMS app on billions of devices around the world. And all you need is the customer's phone number to engage with them. And speaking of phone numbers, your Twilio phone numbers are getting better. Just last week, we announced that we were uh, able to upgrade our toll-free phone numbers here in North America to go from three messages per second to 25 messages per second. And we see this trend continuing as we achieve the scale needed for truly global business applications running on normal old phone numbers. And AI, AI is getting to the point where it can do so many things that we could have only imagined even a couple of years ago. The promise that people talked about a couple of years ago is coming. AI will be able to give customers answers in a quick and timely manner when that's needed, because who doesn't want self-service? But in the cases where AI is not going to get the job done, AI can coach our human beings, give them suggested answers, find the answers for them, and even monitor conversations so that as managers, we kind of know what our people are talking about and make sure things are going well. AI is going to help you do all these things at scale. And we at Twilio, we are investing in all of these for you. And so before I mentioned, there were three things. Driving more interactions, connecting the journey, and creating lasting relationships as the ultimate goal. And we believe conversations are going to do this for you at scale. Conversations will create relationships at scale. And to tell you how we are going to help you do that, please welcome up the general manager of Twilio Messaging, Simon Colliff. Simon, come on up. Thank you, Jeff, and good morning, everyone. Jeff, by the way, Francisco from Nordstrom was watching you live, and he just texted me. He said, he's upset you're not wearing the suit. He got you. <laughs> so it's great to be talking about messaging, because since the launch of the iPhone, which was about 12 years ago, messaging has seen so many advancements. Do you guys have your phone with you? Do you want to show it to me? Do you mind raising your phones? There we go, almost everybody. What would happen if you lost it today at the Moscone? You would panic? Exactly. What would happen if you cannot send or receive a text message from your phone? You would panic as well. You know why? Because it is that direct, unbreakable connection that Jeff talked about, that the CTO of Nike has talked about, is what is happening with messaging. Unfortunately, it is not happening with business messaging yet. It's lacking behind. And every message you get from a business looks like a one-way impersonal notification. But we, actually you, the doers, the folks that have taken the time and built a conversational interface with our 
customers have gotten a lot of attention and loyalty from these customers. So when something looks like this, it looks like a conversation, a two-way street dialogue between you and your customers, great things happen. And we've heard from you, we've heard from a lot of you, that when something like this happens, when a conversation is personal, and it's a two-way street, your business becomes a lot more efficient. How? The first thing is, you get lower resolutions time. The second thing is, you get fewer voice calls. And last but not least, that unbreakable bond, that unbreakable direct relationship with the consumer can happen at scale. But better yet, better yet, your customers are happier. They have a much better experience. The first thing they do is they're no longer on hold, on hold with listening to music. How many in the room love listening to music? <laughs> Probably none. So your wait time is between 21 minutes and 27 minutes. You're not going to hear that anymore. The second thing is they get much faster response time. And last but not least, the research has been done when a conversational interface exists between a company and its customers, 70 to 80 percent, that's the majority, that's an ultimate majority, 70 to 80 percent have a much better perception of the brand. So that's amazing, folks. And I'd say this is, folks who've done this are far and few between. But one of our great customers, who have done this, enabled a conversational interface with, with its clients, is Morgan Stanley. And today, I'm very excited to have with me Dustin DeVincentis from Morgan Stanley to share his experience. Dustin, would you like to come up on stage? <laughs> Dustin! <laughs> Thank you for being with us, Dustin. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, Simon, I wonder if I, could, uh, if I could start with a story? You can do whatever you want. All right, so uh, <laughs> thanks. I don't get that very often. Um, so Simon, I was, I was in New York a few months ago with, uh, with your team, and, and uh, some of my colleagues were there, and we were talking about a deployment we had recently completed. And we were talking about how it was going and what the feedback was and where we wanted to take this product. And um, Zach, your, your head of product management on your team, very graciously took a moment to say how much he enjoyed working with Morgan Stanley. It's very, very nice. Um, and what he's continued on with is that what his team really likes about working with Morgan Stanley is that we care about our customers, uh, our clients. We care about developing compelling experiences for them, things that are simple and intuitive. And we're actually pushing them to, to innovate, right? To, to test the boundaries of the technology. So this is when I, I sort of came to and shook my head and said, Zach, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but um, I, I must be mistaken. What I, what I think I heard was Twilio, a tech startup in San Francisco, telling Morgan Stanley, a 100-year-old financial services organization, that we're the ones who are pushing you to innovate? <laughs> um, that's kind of when I, I had my, Twilio, you, you had me at hello moment. <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. Actually, Twilio, Twilio had me at uh, Ahoy World. So. Uh, and Zach is a great guy. So, uh, Dustin, uh, can you, I mean, everybody knows what, uh, who Morgan Stanley is, but you can tell us a little bit about the business and then share what drove you to, to build something like this. Sure. So, uh, what, what we do at Morgan Stanley, our financial advisors, they work with our clients to understand their financial lives. Um, they, they do that, they understand their goals, and then they, they set a course for going to achieve those goals. And all the while, they're, they're managing risk. Uh, so, so RFAs, they, they bring a ton of intellectual capital and expertise to the table when it comes to uh, navigating the financial markets and, and managing risk. Um, but if you ask any financial advisor what business they're in, they're really in the business of, of managing relationships. So um, what RFAs do is they sit down with their, their clients and, and they understand their financial lives. They, they understand where, where income comes from, where their expenses are. And then they work, which is really difficult, to, to crystallize what's most important to clients. So, so, Simon, maybe you want to you send your kids to school one day, or perhaps you uh, want to care for your, your parents in old age, or maybe you have a, a charitable cause that, that's important to you and you want to contribute to that. So, um, this process is, is not an easy one, and it wouldn't be possible at all without very good communication and the ability to, to build some rapport and build some trust. 
So, so what we built was um, a custom application, it's called Morgan Stanley Messenger, uh, that sits atop uh, Twilio's APIs. And what happens is our financial advisors on there bring your own devices, they download this app, they get a telephone number and they give it to their clients. Clients don't download an app, uh, they just have a phone number and just like you and I would in our day-to-day, -day, we would call and text our financial advisor. That's it, pretty simple. Oh, that's cool. And did you face any challenges along the way while building this? So we, we did a couple that I'll call out. Um, the first one is around set, a very high bar that's set out there. There's a lot of applications that, that message. Um, and the user experience from our standpoint was, was challenging to manage because people expect it to be easy and intuitive. The other one, uh, because we're in financial services, we're a heavily regulated industry, and therefore we have to do things in a compliant way. So we did this because, um, well, we needed to offer our, our financial advisors a compliant solution. Yeah. Got it. And uh, what's been, like, how's it going? And what's been the user yeah. experience? So you know what's funny? The, the experience that we're solving from our user's perspective is actually not a complex one. They say, great. I can message with my financial advisor and my financial advisor team. Uh, so it's fantastic. But because it's rather simple, they're pushing us to enhance. Um, where we're doing that is in, uh, I'll give you an example to, to articulate this. So we have a financial advisor. Let's call her Karen. Uh, Karen actually is not on her own. She has a partner who has some complementary skills, and Karen also has some, some support professionals who interact directly with our clients as well. And then on the client side, let's say it's John Smith. Well, John has a wife and an adult child. And when John thinks about Morgan Stanley and the advice that he gets, he doesn't want us just to work with John to advise John. He thinks about his whole family. So they want to have a group conversation, and that's why we're working with you on, uh, on group messaging. The other thing is, uh, our clients are pushing us and, and our financial advisors are pushing us to think about the clients who spend a lot of time outside the US. So uh, we know SMS is very popular here in the US, but when you get outside of the US, it's not at all popular, right? They're using other applications like WhatChat, WhatsApp, and WeChat. So they're challenging us to think about integration with those points. Got it, got it. And the room here is full of developers. Do you have any advice as you, have you thought of building this? And yeah. as you build it? I, I do, I, so I have two things. Um, Simon, when, when, our, when, I, when I saw our teams work together and, and started uh, seeing some really aggressive progress toward achieving our goals, what I would attribute that to is being transparent. So we opened up, right? we, we Morgan Stanley, you Twilio, we opened up and we talked candidly about our goals and objectives and, and how, we can, how we can see those two interlap, overlap. Um, so that's when we started seeing a lot of traction, a lot of things moving. The other one is um, this concept of challenging each other, right? So thinking back to Zach and I's my conversation a few months ago, um, what I'd say is, is if you're working with Twilio, they're open partners, they want to be challenged, they want to challenge you. So be open to that very candid and, and tough dialogue sometimes. Cool. Yeah. This is so 2019, a 100-year-old bank telling a room full of Silicon Valley developers how to innovate. I love it. <laughs> Dustin, thank you so much. Sure. Really appreciate Take it. Care. Thank you. Dustin the Vincentis, folks. So unfortunately, not every business is like that. So, and not all of them have opened up a conversational interface uh, to their customers. Why? Because it is hard. <laughs> because when you want to enable that kind of interface to your customers, you have to support every messaging applications of choice. So even with Twilio, it is hard to do, because the first thing you do is you have to bring up all the, the APIs for every channel out there, whether it's SMS, WhatsApp, or chat. Then on top of this, you have to build orchestration across all the channels for both messages and media. Then you have to build group messaging. This is not one-to-one. -one. This is group messaging, as Dustin suggested. There's financial advisor and somebody to help them, and a support agent, a person, and their child, or their, their parent. So you have to build group messaging yourself. Then on top of it, you have to do participant management, adding a participant, removing a participant, changing permissions. And last but not least, as you heard, Dustin, everybody's regulated. It's not just financial services. And you have a lot of compliance. So you have to retain a log or a history of all the conversation that has happened, both the participant and the content itself. So you have to do all this yourself. And we all know these, these are not just Lego building blocks. Once you start coding, you get into the rabbit hole. And that's not simple. And we at Twilio, we always, always ask ourselves, 
why isn't this an API? And sure enough, today, I am very, very excited to announce Twilio Conversations. Thank you, guys. This is our brand new API that allows you to do all this out of the box. And let me tell you what all this is. With Twilio Conversation, you can actually start orchestrating messages in the media across SMS, MMS, WhatsApp, and chat. You can scale conversation and group messaging across all these channels. You can maintain uh, and, and manage participant and participant rosters. And last but not least, you can actually maintain the conversation log all in that API out of the box. So we're very, very excited about it. And I can tell you, and I've, I've experienced that all the time, adopting new technology is intimidating, no matter what you do. Like if you go to any support, uh, any company, and say, open up a conversational text messaging with your customers, everybody's going to say, whoa, what are we talking about here? There's going to be an executive meeting and an escalation, and this goes on and on and on. But you know what? We doers, you doers. We don't spend our time obsessing about what we cannot do. You know what we do? We actually get things done. So in one afternoon, and with a few lines of code, you can actually build a proof of concept. Using the CLI interface that Ben showed you, you can actually build a proof of concept. Here it is. So you can create a conversation. Uh, you can add the first participant, which is a chat participant. Then you add a WhatsApp participant. And then you add an SMS participant. And boom. You can e actually extract the message log from the conversation. So that's one, two, three, four, five lines of code. Now, this is not going to. There we go. Thank you. And here's the good news. Conversation is available today <laughs> in public beta. So if you go to your Twilio console, you get access to it immediately. So this is not a future. This is today, right now. If you log into your console, you can do it now, and you can get access to Twilio Conversations. So to show you a little bit more how a Twilio Conversation works, I'd like to invite Andres Yontak, the, who is our director of product. Uh, Andres, want to come up? Thank you, Simon. Hi, everybody. So what I want to, I'm Andres Tack. I'm the product manager for Twilio Conversations. And what I want to do with this time is go a little bit into the weeds of uh, Twilio Conversations, show you how this API works, what it looks like, and actually apply it to a real life situation. And I want to do that starting from this. This is an SMS, probably, that we've all received at one point or another. Essentially, it's our airline telling us things are proceeding according to plan, connecting flight is awaiting. And we've talked about this. It's an open question. What would happen if we responded to this? Would there be someone waiting on the other side? Things are fine from the airline's perspective. Maybe I have a problem. Maybe I have something that I need to tell them, something that I need to involve them with. And we know what the answer is. We are trained to expect this, in fact, that probably there will be nobody. I want to fix this. What I want to do today is take the Twilio CLI, take the Twilio Conversations API, and wrap a conversation around this notification so that no reply gets missed. So let's get down to it. Great. So here we are at the Twilio command line. Uh, now, I'm going to do three things. First, I'm going to create a conversation that wraps this. Then I'm going to add two participants, the customer and our airline. We're going to do this with the Twilio CLI. Conversations is a long word, but don't worry. Twilio CLI has autocomplete. <laughs> Creating the conversation, that's one step. That's easy to do. Let's add that first participant, that customer again. Twilio API conversations, participants create. 
We're going to add him to that conversation, and we're going to have him added on WhatsApp. Connecting with our business on that address. So that's two of them. Now the third one, that's going to be support. Support, most often, operating behind a desk on chat. So I'm going to go ahead and add them that way. Same conversation. I'll grab it from up there. And since it's chat, I can just give them an identity. Support. Great. Three lines done. Let's step back, think about what we've done. This conversation is working now. Messages will flow from chat to WhatsApp, from WhatsApp to chat automatically. There's no back end required to route these messages. I could have done the same thing, routing chat to SMS. Could have done the same thing from SMS to SMS, SMS to WhatsApp. Media will also flow freely among these. Whatever it is that we need to do to make this experience legendary, we can do it with this API. I'll just, we have a situation. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt everybody. Hi, I'm John. I'm the support agent from Lambda Air. And we actually have a situation. So you saw the notification that was on the screen, right? So this is our friend Ricky right here. And <laughs> Ricky left his laptop. He left it on the plane. So we need to help get Ricky's laptop back. OK. So Andres, Andres, add the gate agent to the conversation. OK. OK. We got the gate agent, but he walked clear across JFK. He will miss his flight if he doesn't get his laptop in time. So Andres, add the pilot to the conversation. <laughs> we need the pilot. OK. So thinking about it, thinking about it, Ricky gets really fussy if he doesn't eat, OK? Andres? Add the chef to the conversation. <laughs> the baggage handler just dropped Ricky's bag on the tarmac. Andres, bring in the wand wavy person into the conversation. <laughs> Ricky's not even wearing shoes. This man doesn't have shoes on. Andres, Andres, he left him at security. Bring the TSA agent into the conversation. <laughs> you know, this is, real, this is really stressful for Ricky right now. You know what we need to do? Andres, add a puppy to the conversation. Let's bring in a puppy into this conversation. <laughs> hold, on, hold on, hold on. This is... We get the point. We, we get the point. This is getting absolutely ridiculous. No, 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 stop. We don't need, we don't need any more. Oh, my God. They get the point. It takes a village to create legendary engagement. We can't wait to see what you build with Twilio Conversations. Have an amazing day today at Signal, and we will see you here tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs>